How much do we, in the early stages, I'm kind of controlling my dog's focus a lot out in the world. And then at what point do I allow the dog to take in their environment and let them watch stuff that's happening and engage with the environment to some degree, right? And when do I redirect them away from that and decide that, hey, this is going to be problematic, right? That during my early diagnostic phase, I've watched the dog's behavior a lot. And if I, generally speaking, in the early stages of training, if my dog expresses intense interest in things, I'm not gonna let them focus on them for very long. <laughs> so there's a difference between, I watch my dog's body language a lot. So if I take my dog out and I've been doing engagement and things in the world and I'm out here, I let my dog see some stuff. There's some people walking by or somebody walking by with another dog or whatever that is. And I make sure that I'm at a safe distance in the beginning. So if I need to get out of the situation, I can get out of the situation. And the dog then notices them. And do they notice them like, hmm. They have relaxed body language. They're kind of looking over there. They're panting, their mouth's lolling open, are they, or are they like, <laughs> right? And so if it's an intense stare and they're up and they're, then I'm immediately like, oh, we're not paying attention to that, we're doing something else, right? And this is gonna be the, um, uh, the theme for tomorrow, <laughs> which is the idea that we're preemptive. Good dog trainers are preemptive. Poor dog trainers are reactive, right? So what winds up happening is you're responding to what the dog did after they did it, instead of predicting what they're doing and intervening before they do it. And it's the difference between dog trainers and the re general public. And that's why the problems develop in the first place, right? And so as the dog gets better, I give them longer periods of time to engage with the thing, right? And, but you've learned to read them at that point. Because dogs don't go from totally relaxed and chill to blowing up at something, right? There's a whole transition zone through there. And it may be a short fuse. Some dogs go through the, the sequence quickly, so you don't have a lot of time to make a decision. Uh, but there is a, a sequence. No dog's like, bah! right? There's a tra they have to notice it. They have to fixate on it. There's a, a moment of decision. You're just stiffening a body language, all the stuff that tends to happen right before dogs react, right? And, and so once you've learned to do that, in the beginning, I'm just ultra conservative. That's how I work in the world. Like, I'm thinking, until I know you, I don't let you pay attention to anything. <laughs> like, I take you out there, they're kind of aware something's over there, but I'm immediately having them do other stuff, right? And then as I get to know you, I go, oh, you're pretty relaxed. You don't care too much about that stuff. Then I'll let you watch for a little bit, but I watch them very carefully as they engage with it. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. You check it out, check it out, good. All right, let's go. And we do, our, do something else at that point. So now they start to go, okay, I saw that, no big thing. And then a bunch of good stuff happened around that. I make sure that I have some activity that I can engage them in that they like. That's the biggest thing too. This'll be for tomorrow, we're getting ahead of ourselves. But one of the big things is that people take their dogs into environments before they have any tools in place or any value. Like, I'm a, uh, p I, people go walk their puppies around their neighborhood for socialization. It's a bad idea, generally. Right? It really is. You don't have anything with that puppy. You have no relationship. You have, n you've built minimum value in you yet. You don't, they've typically, they're not as motivated for rewards and stuff as they're going to be. They don't understand any obedience. You can't give them alternatives. And you're just exposing them to the environment and letting them figure out. And of course, you know, all kinds of stuff's novel. Like puppies, sh that novelty should make you anxious a lot. It's normal. And if I let them engage with the environment, they start to become anxious. Somebody comes around a corner too fast. Whoa, what's that? Big hairy white dog, I've never seen that before. Whoa, what's that, right? And that's the root of all the problems. <laughs>